Hey, it's Alex Rackley from Board Game Co., and today we're going to talk about the Wormwood Gaming Table, which might be the first time that something on this, you know, channel has gotten a full coverage of a Kickstarter that wasn't actually a board game. But then again, $6 million on day two with 6,673 backers and a bunch of comments and requests from people who know I like game tables and have covered game tables and have purchased a game table... Well, that will all add up to a dedicated video. Now, so the Wormwood Gaming Table video, this is the Wormwood Gaming Table Kickstarter. This is one that is mostly good news, but with a lot of nervousness and caveats, and I'll get to all of those one at a time. But to begin with, I have spent a lot of time researching game tables in order to buy my own. And I will tell you off the bat, the price here is fantastic. It really is. The price here is great. But I'm also nervous because the price is great, and what does that mean? And we'll get into that. It, it's not me being overly negative. Ultimately, if I didn't already have a game table, I would probably back this. Just to be very clear, despite all the caveats I'm going to give as I go through this Kickstarter, I would probably back this Kickstarter if I didn't already have a game table. That being said, I think I'm a little happy I have a game table already because... Like I said, I'm a little bit nervous about some aspects of this. So, let's go through it. Wormwood is a company that makes great game tables. They they make phenomenal game tables already. They have a reputation for doing lots of, you know, great stuff. In fact, these little meeples over here that you see me occasionally playing with in my videos, these guys are from Wormwood. I bought these guys from Wormwood because I like fiddling with stuff in my videos. And so I got these guys because I figured that I could fiddle with a die or I could fiddle with these guys. I also have a set of some nice glittery dice coming so I could fiddle with those. I just, I like playing with things. And these custom little metal meeples are from Wormwood. Just side point, tangent to that. In any case, the table itself, though, they, what they're doing is they came with this Kickstarter, they hyped it up, they've been hyping it for a long time, and there's a good reason, because they hit $4 million on day one, $4.5 million on day one, they're at $6 million on day two, they have to release a whole bunch of tiers, because the way this works is you don't buy a product, rather you're buying access to where you're going to get that product, to when you're going to get that product. Each tier in this Kickstarter, each of the pledge levels, reflects a delivery date, so the faster you got in, the, the earlier your delivery date will be, which is great. That is a great move, it allows them to stagger their production it allows them to incentivize the hype train it's both it's great for the consumer it's great for the company all in all this whole concept of the way they're staggering their tiers is excellent the problem is the earliest tier we currently have left at the moment is wave nine for october 2021 meaning you could have gotten as early as february but now they're up, up to october 2021 and you can keep going out further and further the more that it goes out you can all go all the way back down to you know where are we up to over here i don't know wave Wave 12 is, goes out to March 2022. So you want to keep an eye on the slots and try to figure out when you want to get in in terms of how fast can you get this table. Because one of the factors that we're going to take into account in addition to price is the time it takes to get this table. Because the price is fantastic, but getting your table in February 2022 is not good compared to the multiple other options out there. So what they're doing here, though, is they put a Kickstarter for a table that is as cheap as $300, although you get what you pay for, or as expensive as it varies, but it looks like you can get a decent amount for even in the $2,000 range. Yes, you can go above it. You can go up to three, dollars 4000 easily if you're, not, if you're not careful. Plus accessories, you can get up to five, six dollars if you really want to push it. But all things considered, when compared to other options on the market, this is a well-priced table. And more importantly, it's a table that grows with you. This is a modular gaming table. This table is going to grow with you. And the way they do that, and I'm going to point out the videos that I recommend you watch. There are certain videos that will give you more of a feel for what's going on here. But they have a great GIF over here where if you look at this, this shows you the basics of the table being put together, taken apart in different options. So when you buy the base of the table that you buy, when you buy that base wood, the base accessories, the base whatever, you can slowly expand different parts of the table by buying different options. You can buy different lengths, different heights to adjust the table to fit your current needs. Obviously, you will pay for those things, but instead of having to rebuy a new table, as you find your own personal needs growing, as your family grows, as your, your dining room grows, as you change, you start with a coffee table because it's all you have, you live in a small apartment, you want to upgrade this. This genuinely does seem to be a table that can grow with you. So this, this whole conversion kit, and they have a great video. I highly recommend watching the video because this, the way this whole GIF over here looks, it makes it look a little cheaper. If you watch the full video, and I'll inclu include links down below, but if you watch the full reel of how to how they actually put it together and what you have to do in terms of once you get the table, you're going to get it deconstructed. You'll have to put it together yourself. But if you watch that video, the components do look pretty quality. I mean, it doesn't look like a cheap, you know, insert whatever furniture name store here. It looks like a decent quality table, despite the fact that it's modular, assembled and all that stuff. So overall, good news. 
In terms of the, let's go through the, the customizer. They have an excellent customizer here that you absolutely have to go through if you're planning in any way considering getting a table. And let's just price out a table. Let's say, for instance, in my case, let's say I would want a large table. Nice little thing over here. You can play Gloomhaven. You can set it up for the table. This is a beautiful customizer. And they pushed off the Kickstarter to get this right. And I think it paid off. This, this customizer really lets you feel what you're actually getting. In terms of the wood, I don't really like light wood. So I'm going to go with an espresso maple. Obviously, if I go with a wedge wood over here, that can be a decent $2,000 on top of the price off the bat. And this price, let me move the screen a bit. There we go. So if we have the the, the price over here, the I'm gonna go with the espresso maple because I'm gonna get, I want a dark wood, but I want to be conservative. I don't feel that strongly about the the wenge wood or whatever. Now I will note they recommend this and obviously take into account if you expect this table to grow with you. That's the main thing you want to take into account. Buy the wood you think you're going to want down the road, because otherwise you'll have mismatched components, which doesn't make for a great looking deluxe high quality table. So the wood is the biggest choice you're going to have to make. And that means if you really like the purple heart, if you like the, the pad, I don't know how to say that word. If you like the purple heart, I can say that, then you're, it's going to cost you a lot up front, even if you're getting a smaller table. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to stick with this special maple for the purpose of just going through this. We got the charcoal felt. Great. That's all, you know, we could buy the Royal force, whatever, but the basic fine. I don't really care that that's fine with me. And then the topper, because if you're going to get a game table, get a topper. That's half the point of the game table is the ability to convert it from what you want. Having a game table without a cop topper is fine if you want to, but then there are cheaper options out there. So I'm going to go with the special maple again, because why wouldn't you want your top to match your bottom? I don't know. Maybe you don't. I, I don't know why. Espresso Maple, great. That puts me at 1600 with four accessories, which is a great price for a table this size. That is an amazing price. Very impressed with it. In terms of the accessories, accessories is where you're going to end up spending twice as much of the table if you're not careful. Or careful. I'm going to grab a few component organizers. Let's say grab a few of these. Let's grab more of them. We want this is a big table. We need some component organizers. Let's grab some modular organizers, a few of those that slap on the side. And we're going to grab a few cup holders because that's definitely important. And let's go to let's go to eight cup holders. That's a reasonable number. What if we want eight people on the table? I'm going to grab that topper block, which is excellent. This is where you can store the leaves of your table. Highly recommend that. I have one of those. It's excellent because otherwise, what are you going to do with your leaves when they're going back and forth? The game deck is excellent. I'm going to add that. There's a little thing over here. It goes great. I have something very similar to that. Slightly different, but I have something that's very similar. And let's. I'm not going to go with any of these other things. And that puts me at 3160 for the table. And you can spend a lot more. You want that card shelf. It's very cool. This card shelf swivels around. Very cool thing. Let's grab two of those, three of those. Again, you can see how the price of your table can easily double with the accessories. All things considered, this is still a good price, by the way. I paid more for this for my table. I mean, I have to factor in shipping. Keep in mind, shipping, by the way, as usual, just like any Kickstarter video, shipping is a factor. That And how much shipping is going to be can add a lot to this table. It's going to be hundreds of dollars for shipping to ship this game. To, not game, to ship this game table. I could have finished it cleanly like that. So check out this whole customizer. It's excellent. It'll give you a real feel for what you're getting, what you'll pay, and it's really worth diving through. But remember the shipping because the shipping is not included in this customizer. So that's what you're getting here. You're basically jumping into a table that can cost you. Well, you know, actually, let's go through one more exercise. Let's refresh this so we can get a clean slate. And let's go through the small table because let's say you want to start with a coffee table. I'm not going to pick the lily putt because that's nothing. That's space to store your games. Barely play a thing. You can play a game on top of it. Let's pick the coffee table. And I'm going to start with that. And let's go through the same exercise. Maple. I'll go through special maple. Charcoal felt. No topper. And let's start without accessories. So for $500 plus shipping, you can get a decent entry point into a gaming table accessory. Granted, it's a coffee table. That might not be the right fit for you. Let it, what if you dump accessories entirely? What if you go with a medium-sized table that can grow with you? And again, same basic thing. You got the topper. Let's get the topper. I spell some maple. Boom. $1,300 for a fairly nice table that can grow. And you can get the accessories later. And keep that in mind. This can be a great entry point to having a gaming table. So why not get this? Why shouldn't you jump in right away? And the reasons are a fewfold. And again, ultimately, despite all my reasons, keep in mind, I'm not against this table. Like I said, I would probably back this despite my reservations, but I do have reservations. So my first reservation, obviously, and this is an easy one, is when are you getting the table? Factor in, if you're in the market for a gaming table, are you willing to wait a year? How long are we out again? We're out currently till October 2021. So we're out a year from today, more than a year. If you're willing to wait a year, 
great. That's awesome. And by the way, saving this much money for a gaming table that you've waited for the past five years for may, may very well be reasonable. Totally go for that. But factor that into your decision. If you buy a gaming table from any other gaming table company right now, generally you're looking at three to six months. It depends on the company. You can get it faster than that, but you're generally looking in that range. So that's one factor. Number two, and this is a big one, especially if you're getting a larger table. Let me see if I can find the picture. If you're getting a larger table, look how big this table gets over here. Let's just pay it to, wait a second to it to go out. You want to factor in corner legs on a large table. Now, hopefully they did. Wait one second. One more. We're getting to the large, large one. And here we go. Look at how long this table is. If you have a table that long with corner legs, I don't know what Wormwood's guarantee is. I don't know at all what they're willing to do or not do. But be very careful about how you stack things in the middle of a table that long with corner legs. Generally, the longer a table gets, having corner legs means the more, it, it basically risks the fact of a table literally falling in half. And I've literally seen it happen. We had our friends, they had a long table with corner legs, they were moving bookshelves, they stacked some books on the table, whole table cracked in half. Now, I don't know what Wormwood's table guarantee is in terms of what happens if that happens, but the longer your table gets, the more you want to be wary of a corner leg setup, and that's all they're currently offering here. When I was in the market for a game table, I specifically and exclusively was looking for a non-corner leg setup, which is either a pedestal or a trestle style. So, and I got a trestle style in the end. But that's, and that's something I factor in as well as the seating, meaning the seating on a, on a corner leg style cuts out some seats at the corners. I want a trestle table to get more seating around the edges. But that's one reservation. The next reservation is really my biggest concern here, which is Wormwood is purchasing an entirely new factory, basically, to produce these tables. Because Wormwood's default tables are in the range of, let's go to Wormwood's, here we go, their default profit table, which is the, the prophecy over here. This table, once you're done customizing and picking accessories, is generally upwards of 10 grand. So my question is that I don't know the answer to, but this is my biggest reservation is, they're clearly not offering the same quality thing for a third the price. That doesn't make sense, right? So what are the sacrifices that have been made? And I don't know the answer to that because they have a bunch of videos in this campaign about how awesome the wood is, how stable the wood is, how great it is, how the quality, the finish, all that stuff they have. They're selling this product and they're doing a great job doing so. But when you see a product that looks amazing and it's a third of the price of another product, and this one's modular, maybe that should be a, a, a reason why it costs more, I don't really know. So what is the sacrifice that is being made to give you a product that is the third the price of their other offerings? That is the question I am most curious to know the answer because when comparing it to other companies, this is still cheap compared to other companies. And I'll talk about the company I got my table from shortly. I'll talk about Uniquely Geek. This is cheap compared to Uniquely Geek. This is cheap compared to board game tables. This is cheap compared to Rascalers or any of the options out there. But if it's just one company to another, you can easily say, well, maybe they figured out this. They're, they're offering economies of scale. They have $6 million. There are all these explanations you can give as to why some one company is able to achieve something that another isn't. So I'm not asking about the other companies. I am far more curious what sacrifices have been made for from Wormwood stance to offer a table that is a third or less the price of their current offering, of their premier game table until now. That is what I'm curious about. And until I know the answer, I'm not confident in the product. Again, keep this in mind that because Wormwood has a good name and because I don't think they're going to ship garbage, I, I would still probably have backed this if I didn't have a gaming table. So both things are true. I have concerns. I have concerns about the timeline. I have concerns about the product. I don't, I, the price is great. And it's a tough one. And then lastly, the last concern I have is if you're buying this for the modular sake of things, just take it with a grain of salt because, not because it won't be modular, but because you never know how long a company is in business. You never know, how, never know how long a company will maintain a product line. Of course, they're pitching as a modular thing right now, but for how long is that promise true? Is it true for two years? for three, for five, for seven? Can they make even such a guarantee? I mean, companies go out of business. I would say if you're buying this table, buy it with the assumption that you'll be able to upgrade at a certain point, but you may not be forever. Fact that into your decision because it's, if you buy a coffee table today, hoping to upgrade to a regular full-size table in five years, hopefully that will still be an option. And I would say probably it will be, but it's also not a guarantee and fact that into your decision. So yeah, ultimately, I think the Wormwood gaming table is probably, the Wormwood modular gaming table, I think it's probably a good buy. My own opinion on accessories based on my own game table and having a bunch of accessories, I use cup holders. No one uses anything else. We have a bunch of cup holders and we use them all. 
but every other accessory we have, we don't find that we use them. We find that they get in the way, and we'd rather just use the regular play area, and that's basically everyone in our group. We've all tried them, and we just have no interest in accessories. I would say look around. Check what other people do. Check what other people's opinions on accessories are. The accessories are expensive enough that, they, like I said, they can double the cost of your table. And the cup holders, while nice, I don't know if they're worth basically paying, you know, if you want eight cup holders, an extra, I guess eight cup holders are worth it. I'd go with cup holders. Cup holders are worth it to add to the premium experience. Everything else, I recommend looking around and getting other people's opinions to see if other people use them. I can't see myself ever buying another gaming accessory again, meaning the types that fit into the slide. Some of the other things I would, they have a great table, they have a great video on the accessories. I do like this block a lot. It came, I don't know if I would have paid an extra $250 for it. It was factored into the price of my table, so I'm, I'm happy about that because Wormwood's charging a $250 for this block, which might be a fair price, I'm sure it is. For me, I'm happier that it's just built into the cost of my table because I really like the block and I just don't know if I would have paid for it, although maybe I would have. It's You need to store the leaves somewhere, so that's a factor. Uh, this divide and conquer piece over here, up to you. It's a lot of money and you have to factor in the storage solution. I'm happier with the way my game table handles it because it's less of a big bulky piece, but this does offer more alternatives that mine doesn't, so factor that in. And then like this, this whole screen, I can't comment on this, I don't have this at all. Uh, battle mat acrylic overlays, I didn't get those because I'm not a D&D &D person, so I can't comment on that. But ultimately, I would say this is probably a good table. This I don't know anything about the resale value of a table because these are very custom decisions, these are very personal decisions people are making, but it's overall a good table for, well, it seems like it's a good table, and it definitely is a good price. So that being said, it's probably something to look into if you, I guess, factor in everything I said, but it's probably a good thing to look into. Lastly, I'll note that the Uniquely Geek gaming table over here, this is, I got my game table from Uniquely Geek, and because I'm doing a video on game tables, I have to give them a shout out because I have to. I'm not getting paid for this, I just... I mean, listen, I like their comp I like their tables a lot, and I'm happy to give them some attention. The Radcliffe Gaming Trestle table is my table over here. Not like this is the model I have. This picture is literally my game table over here because I believe I was the second trestle table they ever made. I like the tables a lot, and I reached out to the company. I said, hey, I like your tables, but I want a trestle table or, or a pedestal table. And they're like, oh, we actually just started doing this. So this picture over here is literally my game table. Uh, it comes with a bunch of accessories, like I said. It comes with the, the top and bottom. In fact, if you go to their gallery, you can see a lot of pictures of how it works. But a good example is using a coffee table as a reference point. They have this inlaid area. You cover it up with the leaves like you can see over here. And then additionally, you have these surfaces that can go on top. So effectively, on my gaming table, at this table over here, at times, I have had a four games going simultaneously. I've had one game going on underneath, another game on this side underneath, and then another game over here, and another game over here. In fact, as we speak, I have the second season or first season of Pandemic Legacy set up over here waiting... Second season. I have second season Pandemic Legacy set up on this end of the table because we're currently in the middle of it as we speak. It's been set up for the past three weeks. We just keep playing it during the week. I highly recommend getting a gaming table. I think they are an excellent choice, an excellent investment. A uh, Uniquely Geek, by the way, one of the nice things about them is because it's custom, it won't grow with you, so factor that in, and it will be more expensive, but one of the nice things is it can be completely custom to your space. You're not fixed into any locked, you know, anything. And that's what we got. We have a completely custom table, exactly the length we wanted, exactly the width we wanted, every aspect from the height of the, 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 the vault inside, all those aspects are measured out to what we want, and in fact, I was able to come up with a custom you know, aspect that you remember this little leaf over here, this thing that goes on top. I was able to design one with them that rests on top, but can be rotated to swivel inside perfectly. So I can have a playing surface on top of the area and swivel inside. But basically, they'll work with you. They'll work with you on any options you want. I do recommend checking them out if, for whatever reason, the Wormwood table is not your choice. Uh, in terms of if budget is your priority, the Wormwood table is 100% the way to go. I would be very tempted by this table if I didn't already have one. That's basically it. That's my thing on gaming tables. I think it's a great buy. I think it is. I have reservations, but the reservations don't... The reservations would not stop me from buying this table. That's what it comes down to. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoy this look into the Wormwood gaming table. A little bit different than our usual stuff because I'm not talking about a board game and I'm not talking about resale value. But I am talking about gaming tables and I think a gaming table is one of the best things you can do for your gaming life. I think I highly encourage it. If you're, if you're spending hundreds of, dollars a year, hundreds of dollars a year on board games and you aren't playing them as much as you want, a gaming table can help you play them more. Having an area that you can cover, having an area that is dedicated can help make gaming more accessible and i mean you can put a price tag on that it's right here it's the gaming table but it's ultimately the reason we're doing this is to play games isn't it that's why we're here so play some games 
Until next time, I'm Alex Vasco from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful in some way. If you have any questions about my gaming table, about you know what accessories work, what don't, what my own personal experience, what I recommend or whatever it is, any questions at all, please hit me up in the comments down below. I'm happy to answer them. I generally try to reply to every single comment and I'll be happy to do so here as well. Until next time, have a good one.